Hello peeps. So basically this is just a quick tutorial to create the custom games wheels and the theme art flicks. So basically you can put all your PSP minis and WiiWare and Xbox Live Arcade, PlayStation Live Arcade, whatever you want to put in, you can just basically make your own. Now I showed my Xbox Live Arcade off once and I had a couple of people ask me how I did it. And literally that was nowhere near as good as this. I literally mimicked the Xbox 360 wheel and edited my old custom config. So it looked in a different ROM solder to the Xbox 360. But basically the system was still the Xbox 360. It was still exactly the same theme. So all I got was two Xbox 360 wheels, which was better than nothing because I hate putting like the live arcade games in with the proper Xbox 360 games. And the reason why I've never put the PSP minis in, which I'll go through, and the Nintendo Wii was, was because I basically didn't want to mix them in with the, the proper systems. I, don't, I just, I don't like it. I'd rather them separate. And because the option wasn't there, I basically never done it. But anyway, this is, this is how I had it set before on the Xbox. And as I say, I basically got two Xbox 360 systems. That was better than nothing, but at the same time, I wanted it better. I had a quick look in the theme, and I couldn't really see what, see what to do with it before. I didn't, I didn't really give it much time, and I, I didn't want to mess about with it too much. So with me updating my drive at the minute, and then building a 10 terabyte system, which is going to be on my website really soon, hopefully. I'd like to have got little things like this right, so I literally went and looked into it. I didn't Google anything, I just did it all myself. I had a quick look about it, I had a quick look at how it was set up. And to be fair, I wish I'd done it sooner because it, it took me about 20 minutes to gather what was happening with the config file and, and how it was set up. And it, it, to be fair, it's really bloody easy and I wish I'd just looked at it before. It's so easy to do. So now we're going to make it look like this. So anyway, let's get started. And we'll start off with the PSP minis. Basically, this has already got all the artwork we need. There's already a theme set up in the actual theme folder. It's just never been fully finished and also there's not a game solder. So you want to come up to Emulation Station when you're in your RetroBat folder. We're going to go to Dot Emulation Station. And if we go into the themes, and elect full art flicks, which is the one I use, my favorite to be fair. And now we're going to click on assets. And while we're in here, these three folders here, the arts, the coin ups, and the logos are basically all the three bits of artwork you're going to need to make a theme. So now, if we go into his logos, this is where all your logos are kept for all your different systems. If you ever need any logos, they're already in here. So you can come and nick them and use them or whatever else. If we scroll up to where we say PSP, we've already got a PSP Minis logo in here. Then if we come into the coin ops, which is the background for all your different systems. And basically that's the Nintendo 64 one when, you, when you've got your games list up there. So again, what we're going to do here is, we haven't got one for the PSP Mini. So I'm just going to click the PSP, right click it, I'm going to copy it. And I'm just going to paste it back into the folder. And then I'm going to rename it PSP Minis. Basically, you just got to call everything exactly the same. So PSP Minis, obviously, it's still a PSP, so we still want the same background. And then if we go into the Arts folder, there's hundreds of different pictures in here, basically, and you can use pretty much any one of them, as long as you're not already using them. You can see all these auto-platform ones, all the actual games collections ones, where you're going to get the Call of Duty, the Castlevania, you know, the bloody Turok and all them sort of stuff. If you've not got them collections in your retro back, you can basically just nick that picture and use it. It doesn't matter as long as it's not in one of your themes. So I'll pick this one out and I go to rename it PSP Minutes. And then, of course, there's already one in here. So it's already pretty much set up the themes. And it's this Angry Birds one here, and we'll just leave it to that for now. And then if you're not happy with that one, I'll show you how to change it in a sec. So if we shut that down, and we come into the Emulation Station and 
emulation station again and we're going to theme again art flicks and now while i was recording here I, I, i've literally clicked on my retro bat here so i can't remember whether this psp minis folder was already i'm 95 percent sure it's already in there so you don't have to create this one basically i'll show you how to do that anyway just in case it's not here i'll show you how to do it with the xbox live okay but i'm 95 percent certain as i say that this one's already here And if you scroll down, yeah, the PSP minis, and all it's got is this custom file in there. So we've come back out now, and we're going to his ROM folder. You'll see there's no PSP minis folder in here. What we're going to do, we're going to right click, we're going to go to new, and then we're going to click folder, and then we're going to call it PSP minis. And then while we're in here, I'm just going to paste five games over. We'll boot up Retrobat now to have a look. And basically it's not showing. So, so if you click on your games collections, you can see there's just no PSP minis in here. So we're going to quit back out of it. But while we're in here, I'm going to turn off all these different games collections and just have it so it says Retrobat and all games. So I want to turn off all these of the favorites and whatever else. We're going to quit out of it. We're going to go back to emulation station, back to dot emulation station. So this is the file we need to edit here, and it's the essystems.config file. Now, basically, as I showed you on, on anything, if you're going to do anything like this, you always back up the original config file. So you're just going to right click it, copy it, paste it back into the folder, put it into a temp folder, wherever you want to do. Just right click, copy, paste, to make sure you've always got it. So if there's any, any issues at all, you've always got a copy of the original config. And I'm going to edit it using Notepad++. You don't have to use this, you can use whatever you want, but I use this all the time, it's free. You just go to the Notepad++ website and you can download it for free. And now when we're in the editor, these are all the different systems. You know, you see MAME, you've got Arcade, homebrew you've got your fb alpha you find a bit of alpha cave so if we come up to search find we're going to look for the psp and then click find next and as it's shown here this isn't what we want so we're going to click find next again until it actually finds the psp system information now you've got to make sure you do this exactly the same as i do it now it isn't odd you've just got to make sure you do it in the exact order otherwise it will not work so basically what they're saying here is obviously the names of PlayStation Portable, it's telling you where the ROMs are, it's telling you what file types it accepts, and it's telling you the emulator and the emulator's cause that it accepts, and it's also telling you at the bottom the theme. Now what we need to do is click just on the system above the very top one here, not up here, we need to click this and we need to highlight it and make sure it's highlighting only one of the systems underneath. So it says system, then it's got all your information, then system again. And then you're going to right click, copy, and then you're going to press enter, and then we're going to paste it. So basically what you're going to end up with is the 3DS platform above, then it'll say system underneath it, then it's all system again, then it'll say your PSP stuff, then it'll say system, and then it'll say system again. So basically you want two systems on the top and the bottom of each system. But it doesn't matter, as I said, because we've got it backed up, so if anything goes wrong, you've got your backup to fall back onto. So now I've got two PSPs, obviously. So with the second one, underneath where it says the two systems, we're going to start altering it. We're going to change that to PSP minis. And then this is the full name. So I'm going to write PlayStation Portable Minis. And then obviously the ROMs, we don't want it to look in the PSP folder because we've got them in PSP minis folder. So we're going to alter that to PSP minis. And also we're going to alter the theme to PSP minis. Now I don't alter this platform here because if you do, then when you go to scrape your games, basically find the artwork, it will not find it. I'm assuming that's linked to the scraping system. So if you change that to PSP minis and you go to scrape your games, it'll just keep saying no games found, no games found. So you leave the platform as is. Everything else I've edited, I've not seen any issues with them whatsoever. And then we're going to click save. 
and we've got our PSP minis folder. Obviously the games aren't scraped, so I'll quickly scrape them and I'm going to speed this up just so it doesn't take so long. And then we're going to come back out of there. We're going to press back, game settings, update games lists. Yes. And then we've got our little video set up there as well. And if we come in, we've got the logos and the artwork. So what I'll do now is I'm going to show you, if you don't want that Angry Birds picture and you want to use a different one, so we're going to come up to emulation and emulation.station again. Back into his Artflix folder. Into assets. So I'm going to come down to the Angry Birds picture and I'm going to rename it and you can rename it whatever you want. Obviously you're not going to be using it anyway, so you can rename it whatever you want. And then I'm going to come back up to the picture I want here. I'm going to click it. I'm going to rename it and I'm going to rename it PSP Minis. And then when we load Retro back, back up, you're going to see it's the little big planet sort of picture in the background. So you just pick whatever you want there. So obviously, it's personal preference. You can download and put your own pictures in here. You can, you can put whatever photos you want in. You can put whatever you want in and just use them. So moving on to the Xbox Live Arcade. We're going to create a folder in his ROM folder called XBLA. Then back into Emulation Station. Dot Emulation Station. Down to Themes. Art Flicks. Go into the Assets folder again. Now we'll click the Arts first. And again, I'm just going to pick a picture in here, you know, as long as, as I've said, as long as it's not like here, the Amiga and Amstrad, obviously using them, Atari ST, using them. But any of the ones that say auto on them, like auto board, auto casino, auto casual, all this here, auto never played, auto light gun, you can use any of these pictures because you're probably not using them. If you are, it doesn't really matter, like I said. But there's loads and loads of really good photos in here. So while we're in here, you'll notice that all these backgrounds are the JPEG file type. When you go into your logos and the coin ops, they're all the .png. So you're going to make sure that they're them as well. You've got to make sure they're the same file type as well. So anyway, I'm going to go along with a banjo because we want. We're coming to his logos. Obviously, we haven't got an Xbox Live Arcade or logo. You can obviously acquire them quite easily off Google. You know, just search for them. You, you'll find them. You're better off searching for a transparent one, otherwise it's going to have a white background. But anyway, I'm going to copy and paste mine in what I've already done. And there it is, Xbox Live Arcade. It's a little bit small, to be fair. I might just edit it and make it a little bit bigger. And again, in the coin up folder, you're just going to go down to the Xbox 360 background. You're going to copy and paste it into the folder. And then you're going to rename it XBLA. I don't believe I've got video footage for this, but that's all you do. You, you, you've already seen me do on the PSP one. Well. So now we've got his artwork set. We're going to come back. I'm going to scroll down to the Xbox 360 folder. And obviously, there's not a theme in here for the Xbox Live Arcade, so we're just going to make one. We're going to create a folder, right click, create new folder, and you're going to call it XBLA. And then we're going to come into the Xbox 360 folder. We're going to copy the custom.xml file from in here. It doesn't really matter, they're all the same, I believe. And we're just going to paste it in here. Now, the only one thing I did edit in here, and I, am, I don't know whether you've got to, because I just come in and edited the actual name in English here, and I, and I changed this to Xbox Live Arcade. Now, I don't, know, I don't know whether you've got to do that, to be fair, but I just did it anyway. Save and exit out of it.
but that's basically all you need to do. They're all the same, they all work. As long as there's a theme in that folder, and because it's called XBLA and all our artwork is called XBLA, it's automatically going to look in them folders for the artwork, and obviously we've already set that up. So now I didn't actually record doing this, but this is my backup here of the config file. So basically, like I said, make sure you back it up. Now we're going to come into the normal one, essystems.config. We're going to right click it, edit with Notepad, and then while we're in here, we're going to spot search, we're going to find Xbox 360 this time. Or just search Xbox, find next. Obviously, it's gone straight to Xbox, and then now we've got as Xbox 360 here. Again, make sure you, you copy in exactly as I do. Don't go to the one above, you want to go to that one. And make sure it just says system, Xbox details system. Then right click copy, and then you need to make sure, don't click on the second one down, make sure you click on this one. And I'm, I know I keep saying this, I just don't want you to basically mess your file up. Press return, right click, paste, and then what we're going to do, we're going to change the Xbox 360 to XBLA. You don't really need to do this, I suppose. So with the full name here, whatever you call this, is the name that's going to show in Retromat. Again, with the ROMs path, we're going to change this to XBLA from Xbox 360. And then, as I've said before, don't change the platform at the bottom, just change the theme. We're going to change that to XBLA. Save. And then we're going to come back out. We're going to go back into the ROMs folder. We've got this XBLA folder here. And then I'm just going to copy in a few Xbox Live Arcade games. And then boot Retro Battle, and there she is, Xbox Live Arcade, with a Banjo-Kazooie background. I'll do a quick scrape of the games. Again, I'll speed this up, and it finds the artwork for four out of five of the games. Again, we'll back out, game settings, update games list, and then it's got this little artwork there on the videos, and it just makes it look so much better. But anyway, that's it. It's just a quick tutorial, and hopefully it'll make your system look beautiful, just like mine. Until next time, peeps.